to my channel 5 minute economics where i teach economic concepts in a span of just 5 minutes well the topic for today is deficit financing a term which is often misused and confused by many of you isn't it well at least for me back in school i always used to get confused with what actually does deficit financing mean so in today's video i'll be talking all about deficit financing its introduction background how does it you know start what how does it affect the price level its limitations basically all you need to know about this particular topic so yeah let's get started also guys don't forget to like this video and please please do subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon it will really mean a lot to me and do follow me on instagram for some fun content on 5 minute economics so firstly guys before going ahead let us over over the term deficit financing for a little while well literally if you break down this term deficit financing means financing the deficit what is deficit deficit basically means the shortfall right and financing means you know how do we cover it so basically how do we cover or how do we deal with that shortfall is known as deficit financing it occurs when government expenditure is more than the government revenue government resorts to this method of deficit financing it has also been defined as the gap between public revenue and public expenditure which can be covered by two ways either government can you know go and borrow the money or government has the authority or you know the power to go and print additional money so basically government how does it operate government transfers some securities to rbi and on the basis of the strength of these securities rbi prints more currency basically this deficit financing terms term means creation of money so that is all what is deficit financing literally to you well let us now quickly go on to the background or the history of deficit financing well deficit financing is not a new term which has been you know advocated recently but it dates back in time especially during war time so you know the historical tradition says that during wars it was the best thing for the governments to do because it was easier it was quicker government could quickly print the currency and you know use it for the resources which are used for the war like you know machinery guns all of that which was required they could easily you, you know buy that with the help of deficit financing by printing additional currency also back in 1936 now 1936 is a period of the great depression 1930 32 was a time when the great depression occurred so keynes during that time had suggested that the best way for an economy to come off out of that depressionary dull lull period is through deficit financing we can print additional money and you know get the economy out of it we can revive the economy he said that pumping more money can you know bring a revival to the economy so this also dates back in time this particular concept how it is also said that deficit financing is useful in underdeveloped countries to promote economic growth you know it's more over used in underdeveloped countries all all pretty people don't have that much power to pay taxes so best way for a government to you know promote a uh, development or growth in an underdeveloped country is through deficit financing also it is noticed guys that you know in a democratic underdeveloped or maybe even a developing country it is difficult for the government to raise taxes so you know if they want to get additional currency or if they want to get additional revenue sorry so then definitely the best or the fastest quickest easiest way is to print currency rather than going for taxation because you know if they increase the taxes then of course there will be huge resentment and you know the opposition will be there so it is difficult so this way you know it is said that when you know government has already resorted to taxation borrowing it has resorted to borrowing foreign aid the last and the best way is to get that uh, you know gap filled with the help of deficit financing so up to now guys i'm sure you might be thinking that deficit financing is the ideal and the most preferred way for a government to finance any kind of shortfall well sorry to break your myth that isn't true because as much as deficit financing seems ideal to us it carries a baggage of problems along with it well number one being deficit financing and price level let's talk about that no you know that when you know the money is printed there is additional money supply that will definitely more money supply will push up the prices isn't it when we studied that in the quantity theory of money also i'll attach the videos link in the comment section below we know when more money is pumped in an economy there will be a rise in price which means there will be a lot of inflation so that definitely isn't very good uh, or ideal for the economy 
Well, we know when there is more money, people have more purchasing power, which means the aggregate demand rises, which basically causes an inflationary gap in the economy. I made up a video entirely on the inflationary gap. I'll attach its link also in the comment section below in case you want to have a look at it. So they are saying that this new currency, which is printed, definitely it will be, you know, we studied uh, credit creation. I have made up a video on that as well attached that link also in the comment section below. So what happens, I'll just tell you in short, the money which we've created will be much more uh, powerful than what the actual amount is because of the process of money multiplier, credit creation, all of that. So banks are going to use that money and that will be pumped in the whole economy, creating an additional, additional money supply, which will push up the prices and cause inflation. So that is why how much ideal it seems that you know creating money or printing or additional money is it does have its shortfalls also it is said that especially this is a problem when during war times you know when war times happened previously even now we know we still are having a war now russia ukraine war so what happens is during war times all our currency what we are printing and the you know what money we are using the resources are unproductive it's not giving us any return right return on our investment so when we are doing it's for the war sake right we're not doing for any productive uh, thing that we are not setting up a factory or we are not you know hiring more people nothing is happening like that but we are using all our resources for unproductive measures so that time Deficit financing can definitely be very inflationary, okay? Uh, also then, because we are using more of our resources on defense sector, our developmental sector will suffer, our civilian goods will be scarce now because all our resources are used for defense purposes. They are saying that, however, it's not always that, you know, deficit financing will cause a problem. Deficit financing, they say, isn't always inflationary. Of course, war times it is, but sometimes it might be put to productive use. For example, when money supply is essential to meet the liquidity requirement in an economy, there's shortfall of liquidity. And we know to inject liquidity when we print more currency, it'll revive the economy, the money supply, right? So that way it is a good thing. Secondly, a poor country, a poor country which has a shortfall of funds, that money which is printed can be used in the subsistence sector and you know for the um, you know for the welfare of the people so that is a good thing again it wouldn't cause inflation but it would cause you know development lastly if the government spending consists of quickly resulting productive efforts so if the government tends to use that money which has it has created through deficit financing into productive resources you know by building factories into public sector by giving employment opportunities then definitely we are using it productively then it wouldn't cause that much inflationary pressure on the economy. So lastly guys, coming to the limitations of deficit financing and what all problems or shortfall it has along with its concept. So number one is when we say that when the public spec sector expands at the cost of the private sector, there might be some rigid policies of the government and because of deficit financing, it might happen that the private sector suffers more than the public sector and you know that actually causes a rise in price. Secondly, price spiral, where well, a classic example of this is when, you know, government sometimes fails to control the price or in prices in the economy, it tends to pump in more money to, you know, you know, uh, uh, finance that shortfall. So when government prints more money, what happens again? There is price rise. Now there is price rise. Now government again pumps in more money. So that is like a price spiral. It's like a vicious circle, which the government is stuck in. In India, it might happen. This is uh, also prevalent in many other countries. Next, resources are used lavishly on unproductive things. Well, definitely, when the government spends on things which are unproductive, well, you know, building a statue, you know which one am I talking about, that much money you are spending, do you, does it give any return? No, definitely not. So if you are using that money in an unproductive manner, it will definitely push up the prices. Next, wage price spiral. Okay, that's not level, that's spiral. Basically, what happens, this is a very age-old concept, actually. Uh, when the prices in the economy are pushed up, the, the labor who are working in factories and labor anywhere, they ask for a rise or hike in the wages because there's a price rise, right? So when they ask for a rise in the wages, the producer or whoever, the entrepreneur is forced to push up, it's uh, forced to push up the wages of the people working. Okay, now when the wages are pushed up, it is definitely obvious that the product, what they are producing, uh, the cost of production goes up because now they are paying more to the labor. Now what happens because of the cost of production goes up, the price rises, now price has risen. So the labor says now price has risen, give us more wages. 
So this is also like a vicious circle economy is stuck in it. So definitely wage price spiral is also, uh, you know, can occur because of deficit financing. Next, when government administration is inefficient, that is, but obvious, you know, when the money is not used productively, but used unproductively because of bureaucracy and because of, you know, red tapism and all of that corruption. So yes, definitely, then it will be more inflationary. And lastly, when there's no excess capacity to absorb that extra uh, price rise, definitely it will cause an inflationary pressure in the economy. So these are all the limitations and this was all about the concept of deficit financing. I really hope this video was useful for you. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please do like this video and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next video pretty soon.